My name is Sal Star Harkness, and I'm a senior lecturer in criminology at the University of New England, which is in Armidale, New South Wales. It's the main campus. I joined UNE back in June of 2020. So partway through the pandemic, I moved university. So previously I'd been at Federation University and before that uh, Monash University down at the Gippsland campus in, uh, in Eastern Victoria. Uh, I've been researching farm crime, particularly rural crime a little bit more generally since about 2012, 2013. There was a gap that I recognised in the amount of information that was being produced, the data and, and other outputs around farm crime. It had been quite a lot being done from UNE and particularly Elaine Barclay, um, but very little uh, elsewhere in the country. So I thought that there was an opportunity to, uh, to fix that, uh, address that problem. Uh, I'm also wear a number of other hats. I'm the co-director with Cole Mulrooney of the Centre for Rural Criminology. I'm the co-editor with Matt Bowden of the Bristol University Research in Rural Crime uh, book series. And with Joe Donemeyer, I'm co-editor of the International uh, Journal of Rural Criminology. And on top of all of that, I'm also the secretary of the International Society for the Study of Rural Crime. In terms of things that I've been reading, uh, perhaps I can nominate a couple of authors, which I uh, I always hang out for the next uh, the next book that they uh, they produce and uh, and and offer for sale. And uh, Robert Goddard is one. Uh, Ian Rankin, of course, and the the Rebus series particularly. Um, but there is another author that I think uh, many of you would be very interested in um, in accessing, and that's uh, Gary Disher. So Gary Disher lives on the Mornington Peninsula uh, in the state of Victoria in Australia. And there are two series that he's done. One of them is called the Peninsula Series, and uh, they're police procedurals. So they follow a, uh, a police officer and all of the interesting things that happen um, in, uh, in Melbourne and on the, on the peninsula. Uh, and the other series is based on a, um, a police officer at a one person police station in rural and remote South Australia. So I can highly recommend both of those, uh, both of those series from uh, Gary Disher. Uh, what do I watch? Uh, I'm quite an avid YouTube viewer as well, increasingly a, a producer as well. Um, and uh, so for entertainment, I, I watch a boogie woogie piano player called uh, Terry Miles. He's from Hackney in London and uh, he, back throughout the lockdown in 2020, he did 101 days on the trot and now he does a couple of live streams each week. So I very much enjoy listening and watching uh, um, Terry. Uh, and the other thing that, uh, that I could recommend that I've been um, really enjoying, it's another YouTuber, a, a vlogger, if you like, called uh, Bald and Bankrupt. And uh, this is a guy from England who travels around, uh, originally he was traveling around India, more recently through uh, the former Soviet republics uh, of the USSR. And uh, he goes to out of the way places, um, throughout the Soviet Union, finding all things Soviet, uh, talking to people that he meets, and uh, that's both enjoyable and very informative too. Perhaps the biggest thing that uh, interests me about rural criminology, it's about creating new knowledge and, uh, and creating that knowledge so that there can be practical solutions and outcomes to problems. It's about shining a light uh, onto places where no light has been shone because for so long, for eons in fact, uh, so much attention in criminology and in other um, uh, disciplines through academia, the focus has been on what happens in, uh, in uh, the urban environments, the build up environments, very little on those rural, remote and regional places. And I think one of the beauties about rural criminology, it's about uh, creating a network of scholars right around the world who can do cutting edge research, which can be highly impactful as well. I'm currently working on a number of different projects uh, in, rural, in the rural criminology space. Uh, an encyclopedia of rural crime, which we published through Bristol University Press, 
uh, a book on farm crime that I'll be co-writing with Kyle Mulroney, the other director of the Centre for Rural Criminology. Uh, but I'm also working with a group of people, a colleague in France and a colleague in the UK, as well as Kyle and myself here in Australia, on uh, police attitudes to, to crime. So we've done surveys in Victoria and surveys in New South Wales of farmers and what are their attitudes and perceptions uh, to crime and perceptions of crime and policing and crime prevention, but we haven't heard it from the other, the other side of the equation. So we're working on, on that at the moment. Also looking at uh, police use of social media in, uh, in rural spaces uh, too. Perhaps I can be bold and offer two um, problems and hopefully some solutions for those. The first is it's around reporting. So thinking again about farm crime, it's about um, the lack of reporting by farmers of crimes. Now there's a myriad of reasons um, uh, that uh, for, for why farmers won't necessarily report, but it's a big problem because uh, if crimes aren't reported, the police can't then pursue the offender, the offender can keep on um, uh, offending. Uh, but there's also resourcing implications too. So those people in the, uh, uh, at the top of government and of the various police forces or police services, if they don't know that crime is happening in a particular area, then they're not going to allocate the resources. So those farming communities or those rural communities are impacted uh, twice effectively. How can we go about um, addressing this? Well, it's about building the trust and the confidence in um, farmers to report those crimes to the police or to crime stoppers or other agencies um, in their respective jurisdictions. Um, and there's a, there's a number of ways that, uh, that that development of trust and, and that stronger, uh, more cohesive relationship can be, can be achieved. And it's about making sure that that happens. The second uh, conundrum, if you like, is that around uh, internationalisation and our access to uh, research, which we know is being done in various places around the world, uh, but it's not coming. Uh, it's not coming to the fore in uh, the English language books and journals and other other um, uh, outlets. So we know, for instance, that there's some great work being done in places like um, like Brazil, but it's in Portuguese and it doesn't come come into the, uh, into the domain of everybody else working the field. So I think one of the things that we really do need to do is to create an environment that allows the sharing of that information. And this is where the International Society for the Study of Rural Crime, or ISROC, ISSRC for short, uh, plays a, an important role, as do organisations like the Centre for Rural Crim Criminology, the, um, the, the Rural Division of the American Society, the uh, rural crime working group of the European society. It's about coalescing all of those people who are doing great stuff and thinking creatively uh, about how we can better share that knowledge and, and being impactful as well. And also when we're thinking about interna the internationalization um, aspect, it's thinking about crimes that happen in rural spaces of parts of the world where no spotlight is often shone. So illegal sand mining in India, you know, the sand used for, the, um, for concrete, vitally important in the construction industry, it's in short supply, illegal organ, um, bodies will go and scrape out rivers and creek beds uh, to get that really fine sand that they need for the concrete. That's not, uh, doesn't automatically come to the fore of our minds. Um, the illegal smuggling trade of all manner of things between, uh, say, across the Myanmar and Indian border, teak, for instance, people, drugs. Uh, so those crimes that are happening in various places of the world where um, not a great deal of research is being done. And I think that's, in, that's an important issue that needs to be redressed. <laughs> 